Good morning, Night City! Hello again, I am Blunty. And what would you say if I told you Cyberpunk 2077's brand new path tracing, ultra brutal ray trace, all of the lights and shadows and reflections and muzzle flashes, the Melton RTX 1490 and the fires of frame rate hell feature actually runs on my humble RTX 3080 Ti. <laughs> Humble 3080 Ti. And not only does it run there, but it does so at actually playable frame rates. Go on. What would you say if I told you that? And what would you say to NVIDIA after all of their marketing around this? And heavy implication that unless you have a 40 series card, you can't do it. And also, before we move on to the nitty gritty, are you trying this out yourself? Please, please leave a note in the down below. Let us all know what your rig is, what GPU you're cranking along with, and what settings and performance you're trying for path tracing, and what frame rates you're seeing. Now then, a few days ago, I put up a video talking about the differences between ray tracing as we know it in games right now, and path tracing, a mutant form of ray tracing that is much more extensive in its implementation. All of this was, of course, within the context of an upcoming patch to Cyberpunk 2077. Not coming anymore, it's here. And it includes a setting that enables what CD Projekt Red and NVIDIA are labeling a technology preview version for full path tracing. In other words, it's like calling it early access or a beta or something. They What they mean by technology preview is if it's broken or unplayably slow or doesn't work properly for you, don't blame us. It's just a preview. <laughs> Well, like I said, now that patch is here, arriving as I slumbered last night, and the very first thing I did upon waking was download the 1.55 gigabyte patch and boot up the game to see if I could use it at all. You see, the catch is, NVIDIA and CD Projekt Red have exclusively been doing this path tracing malarkey and their demos and examples and whatnot, and their marketing, with an RTX 4090, which for most gamers might as well be unobtainium. But the 4070 launches well, tomorrow, actually, and I did a video about that yesterday. And considering the 4090 demos we saw indicated that Path Traced Cyberpunk runs as low as 16 FPS at 94K on even that monster of a GPU, and NVIDIA was saying very loudly, that the only way to get good frame rates with this very thirsty path tracing stuff was to use their magical DLSS 3 and AI frame generation, which of course only exists on the 40 series cards. Well, if the 4090 struggles that much, well, I had my doubts if even the much more obtainium RTX 4070 would have what it takes to even make this work at a playable level. Turns out, all of that was unnecessary. I was tricked by their marketing. I was fooled, as were we all, weren't we? The path tracing feature is indeed a lot more intense than even psycho-level ray tracing, of course. But you're looking at it right now, running on a 30 series card. Oh, and just on that note, by the way, just so you folks know, with the exception of this little walk comparison, all the other comparisons in this video you'll see are with ultra ray tracing mode, not psycho, as I don't usually run psycho mode myself, because my usual settings are to run this game at 4K with performance DLSS mode, and psycho takes me just below the frame rates I like to aim for, while ultra is a nice little sweet spot for me. So all the comparisons that I'm showing you here are at settings that I would personally feel comfortable actually properly playing the game with. These are not settings I just use to show it off. These are not settings I just use for photo mode. These are not settings just, just to max things out and go, ooh, look how pretty. These are settings I would actually play the game with. So all of that means I am accepting no less than 45 FPS, but I'm aiming for 60. Short dips to 30 FPS at the most demanding times are tolerable, but I'm not very happy about it. So, look, I'll, I'll spare you the whole process, but suffice to say, I spent a good 20-25 minutes solid just fiddling with different combinations of settings in a few different, you know, locations that I knew would be tricky. Lots of lights and lots of different kinds of lights and lots of people and lots of objects and that kind of stuff. So I went back and forth and back and forth and different combinations of, of settings and resolutions and whatnot. And what I settled on, for me, for my rig, which is a 3080Ti and a 3900X and 32 gigabytes of memory, was running the game at 1440p with DLSS performance mode. 
Now, DLSS 2.0 performance mode, which is what you get on the 30 series cards and the 20 series cards for that matter, means I'm running an internal render of 720p and that's being kicked up using DLSS Sorcery to 1440p. There is a setting below that where I get great frame rates, but the compromise is too great to the visual experience. Ultra up performance mode cracks a 480p render internally to scale up to 1440p. And while the softness isn't too bad, certainly not as bad as you would expect it to be, DLSS is really, really good. Um, but there is, however, a lot of artifacting and shimmering in a lot of objects that I just can't deal with. Way too distracting, way too ugly, no thank you. Above performance mode, there's a balanced mode, which does in fact do pretty good. It uses a 1485 by 835p internal render when you're outputting at 1440p, but that puts me on the edge of the frame rate range I'm shooting for. I'm seeing below 45 just a little bit too often for my taste on that one. Performance mode is, in fact, what I usually use anyway when I'm playing at 4K, and at that resolution, the internal render is 1080p. So the long and the short of it is, while ultra ray tracing, that is the, the regular ray tracing, at 4K with performance mode DLSS gets me my frame rates of 50 to 60 FPS. That's how I usually play the game. But I need to step down to 1440p and still use performance mode DLSS to get similar frame rates to that on my 3080 Ti if I want this path tracing. That is, in fact, a lot less of a compromise than I was expecting. In fact, I had expected, if I could run it at all, to maybe get a 1080p experience still using DLSS performance coming up from 540p. The only big issue, outside of the performance hit, of course, is path tracing actually causes some artifacting from time to time. Every now and again, I'll spot an area or a specific object that kind of shimmers with pixel noise. That is actually the path tracing in action. You are watching the paths being traced. You are literally seeing the pixels being hit with the path traced light beams. And this shimmering is what it looks like when error correction fails to smooth things out correctly. You sometimes get errors like this with normal ray tracing too, although they're a little bit more subtle uh, and it's a lot rarer and in much more specific circumstances. But with path tracing, it's a little more common. It's not everywhere, it's just here and there you'll spot it. But hey, we can't complain about that artifacting, can we? Being that it is just a technology preview after all, and therefore immune from criticism for that reason alone, right? <laughs> it's just a beta. Honestly though, it was still uncommon enough to be tolerable to me, to be acceptable. I don't love it, it's a bit distracting, especially on large areas when it happens. But you know, I understand why it's happening, so when I see it, I go, oh, this is the path tracing being a bit wiggy. Oh, cool. Um, but this is obviously a problem that does need to be solved uh, once this technology goes into more and more games. Now, back to those frame rates. There's no doubt that this game at 60 plus FPS feels great. At triple digits, woo, smooth and glorious, lovely. But my aim of 45 to 60 is for the style of gameplay this game has perfectly acceptable to me. I'll take that hit in frame rate because I want the world to look prettier. Because even if most FPS games I'd usually aim higher, in fact, much higher, uh, Doom is unplayable at anything less than triple digits for crying out loud. <laughs> Cyberpunk is more about the world and the immersion and character-based storytelling than it is focused on the moments of high-action shooting, which are relatively rare in this game, and depending on your playstyle, might not even happen at all. So I am in fact okay with a slight compromise against where I'd usually aim for with the full-on high-action first-person shooters. But hey, story is, turns out all of NVIDIA's crowing about an RTX 1490 at 20 FPS in this game without the RTX 40 series exclusive technology of DLSS 3.0 and magical AI frame generation was marketing all along. Not just marketing, of course, they are telling the truth. If you want to run this thing at 4K at very high frame rates, you are going to want a 4090 or whatever with all that technology turned on. But in all this marketing, they very carefully and very deliberately left the impression in most of us that only a 40 series card would be able to make this game playable with path tracing. And that just isn't true. If I want path trace lighting, I can totally have it on my 3080 Ti. And of course, I do want path trace lighting because, well, you don't even have to take my word for it. Digital Foundry have made a fantastic video yesterday with all of their usual attention to detail and side-by-sides and more careful explanations of the technologies than I am giving you. I strongly recommend you give it a watch. 
We have Cyberpunk 2077 on an RTX 3080 Ti, 1440p DLSS performance mode, and full-on, full-fat, big chunks, next-generation path traced lighting can do. Will do. Currently making plans for my next live-streamed playthrough of this game, and um, I think this is how I'm going to play it. Although I might actually swap out, temporarily, my usual 4K gaming monitor if I'm going to do that. Because 1440p upscaled on a 4K screen makes it look a little bit softer than it should. So running it natively on a 1440p screen uh, should make it look even better for me. Uh, that comparison is irrelevant to you guys because, well, you're watching on YouTube and I recorded all this at 1080p anyway, so, you know, because resolution wasn't really the point. Oh, and one more thing. The awesome thing is, even if you can't get playable frame rates with this, you know, your, your hardware's just not good enough. You're on a, you're on a 3060 or something. You can't, can't quite get there. Uh, you can still turn on path tracing just for photo mode. And in photo mode, who gives a crap about your frame rates? It might make it a little bit tricky to, you know, move your camera around, but you can deal with that. So that wish I made in the video just the other day about maybe even just using it for sweet ass screenshots, even if I can't play with it turned on, well, that came true. You can totally do that. That's an awesome choice to make, CD Projekt Red. Thank you for that. Very nice. To the rest of you, thank you very much for watching. Thank you as always to the patrons scrolling up above there. Thank you for watching. I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time. See you in Night City.